All right, guys. I got a message for Sixers fans, and then I have a message for Knicks fans. Because I don't want you guys to take this as an open invite to continue to act like idiots. My entire live stream from last night. All Knicks fans. The whole thing is Knicks fans, bro. It's insane. Thank you for the interaction. Thank you. Algo gang. I mean, you're typing your little hearts out telling me to shut up. But you're literally paying me. You are pushing the stream through the algorithm, getting me more and more ad revenue while telling me to shut up. Do you understand how stupid that is? Anyway, Sixers fans first. All right, because my instant reaction uh, was one out of emotion, of course, and I hated the way that the end of the game was officiated. And I still hate the way the end of the game was officiated. We're not, I'm not saying what Knicks fans are out here saying, that it wasn't a foul. <laughs> Come on, be honest, bro. At least say it was a foul and they swallowed the whistle and you just got to play through that type of shit. Like, don't tell me it wasn't a foul. You know, don't tell me Nurse didn't call a timeout. Don't tell me Tyrese Maxey wasn't mugged. Your own, your own fan, Stephen A. Smith, said Tyrese Maxey was mugged and it should have been called. But anyway, this is a message for Sixers fans, okay? Because the Sixers lost that game. Not the officials. You know, I, I was really mad about how many touch fouls Jalen Brunson was getting uh, because he shoots a wide open jump shot and kicks his legs out and falls over. It's very annoying. But in the second half, Joel Embiid got a lot of those too. And they stopped giving it to Brunson in the fourth quarter. I wish they wouldn't give it to him the whole game, but at least they stopped giving it to him in the fourth quarter. He was still trying to flop every time he shot the ball, which according to NBA rules is supposed to be a technical foul, but we're not going to go there. But I, I, looking back at it and really looking at the numbers, I can't really put it on the officials in that regard. I mean, they were horrendous, but officials are always horrendous. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers lost the game in the third quarter. Okay. Look how the Knicks defend Tobias Harris right here. And this is the Sixers main offense all season long, two man game with Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid. And when they bring the double to Joel, you swing it to the corner. Look at Josh Hart. He does not give a flying shit about Tobias Harris in the corner. And why doesn't he? Why doesn't he care about Tobias Harris in the corner? Clank. I mean, not even close, you know? You just have to have a guy there that can make that shot. So they start doubling Tyrese Maxey as soon as Joel Embiid was out of the game and forcing the 76ers to make somebody else beat them. The guy that was on the floor the whole time that Joel was out of the game and Tyrese Maxey was getting doubled, was Tobias Harris. And he was 0 for 3, and Maxey was 0 for 4. So two guys that played a combined 22 minutes in the third quarter were 0 for 7 and a minus 17. And this is what Tyrese was doing the entire third quarter. And I loved his overall performance in the game, and I loved what he did in the fourth but you don't have enough depth to take quarters off. You just don't. And Tyrese has to go at Josh Hart right here. Tyrese has to attack Josh Hart right here. Jab, step, and go baseline. Please, for the love of God, stop giving the ball to Tobias Harris. And I just can't wait till this is not a play that the Sixers run anymore. He's just, you're not physical enough, bro. Tobias, you can, you, this is why Tobias Harris gets this shot off against the Dallas Mavericks and against the Charlotte Hornets and not against the New York Knicks. Look, Josh Hart is going to play you very physically and he's going to stay straight up 
and it's fucking great defense. This is not a hard enough shoulder turn. That's not hard enough, bro. You got stonewalled, bro. That's not a hard enough drop step. That's not a hard enough drop step against the New York Knicks in the playoffs. Put your damn shoulder down and move him. You didn't move him. He stood still like a brick wall, and you faded away from the contact and shot another brick. To be fair, you guys are right about the officiating. Because here's a great take by Tyrese Maxey. Nice hesitation, nice little dribble move on DiVincenzo right there. Gets in a lane, goes to his left hand. Gets absolutely clobbered by Hartenstein, bro. Absolute elbow to the throat. No call. Jalen Brunson, meanwhile, getting ghost whistles the entire first half. But they're going to play it physical. You got to finish that. Now, Sixers fans, here's what I want to say. Did the refs swallow their whistle at the end of this game? Yes. Watch Tyrese right here. Big shove on Josh Hart. No call. We, we, guys, we got we gotta be we gotta be unbiased. We gotta be honest with ourselves here. It's a straight two-handed shove. We're lucky they didn't just call an offensive foul right there. The refs decided. I don't know. It's a rugby match now, this last possession. We're going to let everything go. So Maxi gets away with one there. Brunson's got the hand on the hip. Yeah. Grabs the jersey. Yeah. But you, you got to come up with that ball, bro. You got to come up with that ball, man. You have to. And, and, and it, it feels to me like Tyrese right here felt the jersey pull and threw his arms up instead of making sure he secures that ball. You know, Lowry tries to lead him. Brunson pulls the jersey. But, bro, you know the rules, the wide receiver rules, man. It hit you in the hands. You got to catch it. You have to do everything in your power to make sure you control that ball and get fouled and the game ends. And I love Tyrese and him only being 23 years old it is part of this. You know, when the, you know, he kind of gets a little bit skittish. Uh, when shit gets crazy at the end of games, you know, that that uh, the turnover in the Clippers game where he fell over, things like that. But um, I can't blame the refs here, dude. You know, a little jersey pull should not destroy your entire game. You have to absolutely make sure you come up with that ball. Now, he has the ball. Why are you falling over right here? This is not me, you know, let's go slander Tyrese Maxey. I'm just saying. Now you've had now you've had two chances to possess the ball. You got it right there, bro. Just hold it, man. Just hold the ball. Does Josh Hart get on him a little bit? Yeah, but I think he made contact with the ball right there, too. I'm not mad at that not being called a foul right there. I'm really not. And Tyrese dove on the... Now you're on the floor with the ball. Is Nurse calling a timeout? Yes. But why are you trying to pass this ball, Tyrese? Why are you trying to pass this, man? Hold on to the ball, bro. Just hold it. And it's a jump ball. At, at the very worst, it's a jump ball. Whatever you do, don't do that. Now, right here, you know, we've fucked ourselves three times in a row. We still have a chance to close this game out. What's Nicholas Batum doing? Joel's going to box out Hart. Tobias is going to box out OG. Nicholas Batum, get your ass on Hartenstein's nutsack right there, bro. Pause. Your ass should be, you should be giving him a fucking lap dance right there, bro. What are you doing? That's pathetic, man. For an ex for, for a player as experienced as Nicholas Batum. That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. And there's three things, three or four things right there in a row that lost you the game. Now. For the Knicks fans, I want you to understand something. 
you've been getting very much good fortune in this series so far. Ball's bouncing your way. Ball's bouncing in the rim. I need you to understand something. The universe is all about balance. If you were straight up and down smacking us, I would say the Knicks are beating us up. But when you're getting the officials on your side like this, and you're getting wild bounces that are going in, I got bad news for you, Knicks fans. The law of averages always comes back around. Nobody beats the law of averages. And when things are happening like this, when things like this are happening, bro, you should be very worried. Because when things like that happen, you're in trouble. That's why it's a seven-game series. That energy is not going to continue for four games. Teams don't get lucky four games in a row. And I'm telling you, when that energy swings back around and that good fortune starts happening to the other team, you're in trouble. So burn and bead jerseys outside the arena. Put the Boston Celtics on the scoreboard during, during shoot-around to insinuate the series is, almost, is already over. Do all the talking and all the celebrating. It's going to be a lot of fun bringing all that back when that energy comes back around. I'm telling you, bro. Everything is balance. Good, evil, rain, sunshine, hot, cold, happy, sad. Everything in this universe is balance. And the pendulum has been over here for two games, bro. You need to understand that it's going to come back. You know why you don't sit at a blackjack table for three straight days? You got to get out while you're winning because you're watching the cards come out and you're winning and you're winning and you're winning. It's not going to keep happening. We'll see you guys in Philly, man.